I'm delighted to welcome Linda Gorman into the studio. Morning, Linda. Morning, guys. Hiya. Thanks for coming Morning. in. We're, we're, we're talking about uh, a museum exhibit in Dundalk in County Louth. So this is opening. Uh, it's on the women's game, women's football in Ireland, and it will be open uh, until from Saturday, November 18th until mid-January. It's going to be free as well. This is this is really exciting, isn't it? Some it's recognition. Happened. It's it's amazing, and what it does is actually it's, it celebrates the history and origin of the women's game, and also the legacy that it has inspired for today's team. So it is, as you said, in Dundalk, in the National, in the County Museum mm. in Dundalk, it opens 2.30 tomorrow. Um, it's going to be absolutely fascinating. You might want to ask why Dundalk. Um, Dundalk Museum is very interested in women's mm. sports and it also has an extensive sporting collection of trailblazing women. Now you're talking about um, Deirdre Gogarty's boxing kit. Mm -hmm. Now she's the first female boxer in Ireland and also Maeve Kyle's Olympic medal and that's the first one by uh, won by a female Irish athlete and also just before lockdown they hosted um, a sporting con uh, conference on women's sports mm. but there's also a local connection which is really really interesting when you talk about the origins of the women's national team um, a team called Corinthians women's football team uh, formed by Kevin, the late Kevin and Anne Gaynor uh, in Dundalk and had players from all the surrounding areas. And they actually went on, believe it or not, to be a founding member of the Women's FA in the UK because there was no association here for women's football, which is quite interesting. And of course, when the famous Stade Reims team came to Ireland for a two-week tour in 1972, one of the pitches they played on was Oriel Park. Now, I happened to play there myself with Paula Gorham, and you would all know Paula Gorham. And Paula Gorham actually played for Corinthians, um, which is quite, has the, the interest as well mm. of why the museum up there is hosting this um, exhibition. And then, of course, when we come close to home, we have the women's national team who made it to the World Cup for the first time this year. So the curator... Um, Brian Walsh saw it as an opportunity to look back at the history of the game and um, so thought it was one of the things that they should do. Now, that would never have happened without the um, Helena Bourne. I'm not sure if you know Helena Bourne. She has the most extensive knowledge on women's um, football in Ireland. Right. Every level, every level. And that includes Northern Ireland as well. She actually was researching the Jays tour, which I played for. We went on a tour of um, France playing against Stade Reims in four different locations mm. in 72. And she reunited us last year and we had a reunion in um, September of last year. And that sort of set the ball rolling for the next step, which was um, what was going to be happening on the national team. So if you're looking at the exhibition, you're looking at a time frame from when that Jays tour started in 72 to the following year, the Stade Reims team, <coughs> excuse me, did a two-week tour of Ireland. Um, and then it led also to an international game between the two countries in September of that year. So two months later, past their tour, we were going to play before a men's international game in Park de Prince. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a little bit of footage there, and mm -hmm. I've seen that, and I've seen myself, and I'm saying, oh, my God, I remember that. You know, I the can remember going The newspaper coverage is great from it as well. Kathleen Ramswam, I think, Brennan Kathleen. now, she had, like, the newspapers when you guys had your 50th anniversary dinner. And yeah. whenever she came with the big bag of stuff, and she, she still had the jersey from the day, yeah. she had all the newspaper cuttings. Yeah. You said, I'd love to go to her house someday and just go through everything Listen, she has, because it sounds I'd, pretty incredible. I'd love to have the jersey, but unfortunately, we were... Uh, my parents... If you did step down a line, you know, we couldn't, we didn't keep any jerseys at that time. So she was really smart to keep the jersey and lucky for us that she did. But if you go back to the ex uh, uh, exhibits, um, some of the exhibits are the earliest jerseys that we wore. So for me, they're going to evoke different memories depending on the jersey I look at. And of course, I'm going to be comparing the styles and the materials to what mm -hmm. the girls are wearing today. Because my recollection was, if you were playing in bad weather, 
It was like a Heavy. jacket on yeah, you. Right. Really, jacket. You know, like the old rumpy jerseys. There was something like that as well. You've got a piece in with you here yeah. as well. I do. Um, I've been now? boasting about this hmm. all year. Boast away. Um, it's a 50th anniversary cap that the FAI give, give to every single senior football Hold player who played um, on the national team to mark the 50th anniversary of the first game that was played against Wales in 1973. Mm. So we all get one of those. That's amazing. It's fabulous. And, and, and just to boot, um, because it was the 50th, I got a replica jersey oh. made. You know, um, of it. and what was love about this is my name is on oh, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. And the trailblazers, which was great. And then we also, just as to top it off, just a couple of weeks ago, the central bank gave us a commemorative coin, you know, oh, which lovely. was fantastic. So it's, and it was a great day there as well. Is it, so. is it emotional to be getting this much recognition and deserved recognition, but so long after the fact? Well, I, I'm still coming to terms with the fact that. I made history like the rest of the girls. I, I sort of really can't believe it, particularly when you think about the way it came about. Mm. You know, it's just amazing. Like, us going to play Stade Reims, them coming back here and doing a tour um, around Ireland, the places that we played, the relationships that were forged, the history that was made, and all that set the groundwork for today's women's national team. Um, I mean, Stade Reims, you may not know this, but Stade Reims at the time, um, according to the Kilkenny News article, were world champions. If you can consider that between 1968 and 1975, they mm. played 260 matches, only lost 21. Jeez. You know, so, I mean, and then their historic tour was just fantastic because when they came here, like, I'd been over there and I had played the year before, and to see their stadium, the Stade Reim Stadium itself, was amazing. And then to go and play in Park the Prince, believe it or not, my very first picture I took was the Irish flag hanging out outside Park the Prince, because it, I remember looking up and seeing how huge it was. So they come to Ireland, and I mean, we're playing on football pitches, greyhound tracks, rugby grounds, you know, dreadful and then many of us Irish girls playing around the country would not have known each other mm. you know or played with each other only at those mm. games and um, and again what was so awe-inspiring for us is that at that time they had a background staff I mean they had manager a qualified coach a doctor physio a dietitian <laughs> we had a manager <laughs> uh, unqualified coach on a magic sponge <laughs> I mean they had kits for all the games we borrowed kits you know it was all that type of stuff I mean when I look back and I see the pictures they had all had lovely track suits if we had two track suits between the whole team mm. that was they it made, they made you realize the way things should be well, I knew that from the year before yeah. because I had been there and I knew the standard that that was set. And in actual fact, the Stade Reims players, many of them played on the international team, you know. So um, that was momentous for me. And of course, it was awe inspiring for the other girls because when you think that a group of very young girls went on an adventure to France. I mean, one of them, Kathleen Caulfield, she was only 14, Jeez. you know, and then to come back and see that this has led to the international team being for, formed because of the relationships that were formed. You know, it's, it's it just beggars belief. You've been invited to the FAI Cup final this weekend between Selber and Athlone Town as part of the 1973 side. Yeah, it's, it's actually part of... Again, this, the history is a bit askew there because between 1971 and 1973, 1970, yeah, 72-34, there was the Irish Ladies Football Association. Mm. And the teams that played in that um, are, are us. So it's Kilkenny, Avengers, Suffragettes um, and Galway. And all those players played in that cup competition, and we're all the players that are being invited. Now, that competition isn't officially, according to the records, um, the, uh, part of the FAI, because the first LFAI 
competition was held in 75. Mm. But this competition had gone, so they're rec retrospectively recognising. So we're all, well, hopefully everybody's going to go and mark the occasion. Amazing. Yeah. yeah great day out yeah. as well. We, we should mention as well, uh, uh, off the ball, Vince applied Jerry's interview he did with Anne O'Brien for this exhibition as well. And, of that's, course, that's going to be on OTB Sports that's Radio at 10 a secret. That was one of, see, we don't want to give away everything <laughs> that's happening news, up there. This is breaking news, breaking news this morning. <laughs> that was a, a coup. I just had the chance of asking here when I was here during the summer, it was there a possibility because there's so little footage of Anne and she's so famous. But that's um, one of the draws that's going to be Amazing. at the exhibition. And it's only thanks to you guys that you held it and you were willing to give it to us because we thought that we had lost it. Mm. I reckon sport. the next time you're in Linda, we should all have Gorman jerseys on. I feel like it would be a nice addition. 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But, you know, and then with the world, with the, the cup game on Sunday, um, it's going to be very interesting. I'm not as au fait with the teams. My interest really lies in some of the players that I that I knew, but particularly Alex Cavanagh. She's Fingless. I'm mm, from Fingless. So I Very good and player. Yeah, very, very good player and young, mm. you know, very young player. And her dad was a great player as well. And then, um, I mean, I suppose on the other side, it was Katie Lovely from Bowes. I mean, I had her as a, a young girl in home mm. farm. So the, there's my sort of interest. But at my age now, my interest is just playing. Yeah. I'm, yeah. you know, oh, rather than playing? watching. Oh, I am. Yeah. yeah, I was playing yesterday in the morning up in St. Kevin's. Is this the walking the football? Side. That's nearly not walking. Let's not say walking. Yeah, that was yeah, she said was that it yeah. wasn't really at all. It's like actually it's it depends. Game of football. Well, I, well, yeah, it's not walking and it's not. It's supposed to be. It's great, but yeah. it depends on the players who turn up. Yeah. Like if you were turned up, there'd be a little bit of physical stuff and a <laughs> little bit of tackling. Yeah, but but dangerous. for the older guys um, and whatever, I can't say that because I'm seventy today. But um, what? today, today, yeah, just yeah. today. It's your birthday today. today. I would it just is, stop. Yeah. I would bury the lead. Uh, we have a happy birthday there, Steve. <laughs> Surely, <laughs> my God, <laughs> happy, happy birthday! Do you bury the lead? Like no, 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 no. But anyway, if I'm trying to say no. I would just stop. I tried so to set a record of continuing to play, but my oh joints my are God. falling apart. That's unbelievable. Oh, well, happy birthday. Thanks very much, guys. Amazing. Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. That, that is... And what a weekend, right, to have it. To celebrate it. You know, what, a, what a day to celebrate. What a way to start the celebrations. Yeah, yeah. yeah I started yesterday. All the comments yeah. are coming in on YouTube here. Lots of yeah. happy birthdays coming yeah, on. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you've got the birthday today, you've got an exhibition, and you've got tomorrow uh, when you've got the cup final. Yeah, and the the most so. important is I'm meeting all my old colleagues, my old friends, They're, that's the big, big thing for Brilliant. me, you know, because a few of us are no longer here, like yeah. Anne, you know, that would have been amazing you know, mm. to, to have Anne. Um, and then, you know, Tina Jones is another one as well, and Mary, Mary Raymond, who never been able to locate to get mm. her to get her cap, she passed away, can't find her family. Um, so, I mean, there's just loads of stuff going on. Yeah, you know? But then that's my life anyway. There's yeah. always something going on. Yeah. It's not like... Where to be. Yeah, where yeah. Be, yeah. People said when I retire, you know, when you retire, you know, you'll, everything will slow down. I have to say I'm playing more matches now yeah. than I did when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. It's great. Keep it that way. Yeah, Keep it that yeah. way, 100%. But going back to the game as well, I suppose the people I know, you know, the most people I know best... Um, between the two teams mm. is Noel King and Joey Malone. Yeah, I course. would have known them from coaching and they're fantastic. Now I know that um, it's a replay of the last final, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well these two teams have a bit of history. Yeah, they do, they the do. Spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it could work both ways. I, I, I think that Shells have the edge, actually. Um, but. You never know. Sometimes passion and drive and enthusiasm and the will to never give up. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, last night I was looking at the game and Iceland went one ahead and I thought, oh my God. But then you blink and the 4 0 down, <laughs> the 4 1 down, you know, so you never know. Football happens fast. Mm -hmm. Linda, thanks a million for coming in and happy birthday again. Thanks very much. Very in guys. the lead there, but uh, yeah. brilliant stuff as always. We'll so listen, everybody come to that museum. 100%. Loud County fantastic. Museum in Dundalk, opening tomorrow until mid January. It's free football exhibition on women's, the women's game in Ireland so definitely encourage everyone to go along to that Linda Absolutely. thanks for coming in. thanks guys brilliant stuff